Now with the motor removed, because it's pretty heavy at about 20 pounds, somewhere around there, uh, this unit's a little easier to handle. So what we're going to do now is move it to where we can drain it. So, here's our drain at the bottom that I was pointing out earlier. We've got to hang it off a good distance and tip it a little bit. Usually I crack the drain plug loose first. And for that, as I mentioned before, you'd have a heck of a time using one of these T-handle Allen keys. So, like I said when we were discussing the tools that we use to do these rebuilds, I won't mention any names, but this is not a low-end tool. Um, we use a higher quality Allen socket. Because some of these Allens are pretty tough to get out, so what we usually do is see if we can get it to fit. This one went in there pretty good. Uh, if it had had it not gone on, gone in there pretty good, I would use a pick and clean the hole first, and then taking my hammer and seated it in there good, and then put my ratchet on there. Now this one here is very loose, which is good. It probably means that the owner some point at least changed his fluid. Now, the O-ring is sticking to the sump face. So I'm going to see if we can get it to stick back onto the drain plug itself. Which we did. Okay. Now to uh, facilitate the draining of this a little quicker, what we have here is a Chaiwan, as I like to call them, a 5 eighths combination wrench. And what I did, I don't know if you can see this, I took it over to the bench grinder and ground this radius here down significantly, so it's kind of thin. And I'll show you why. This drain plug is very close to this portion of the cap. And a conventional combination wrench will not fit with the closed end. You'd have to use the open end. Well, then you run into the problem that there's a stud and a nut sticking out right here behind it and you don't have very much room before you're hitting the stud. And it's very difficult sometimes just to remove the drain slash fill plug. So, adapt, improvise, and overcome. Cheap tool, ground it down. I got a bunch of the same size tool here, all made, uh, as I like to say, chai wan. So we're going to remove the fill plug first because it will drain a lot faster and we won't have the plugging usually it's not as messy doing it this way so here's our drain plug uh, we've been doing this long enough where we just have a container throw the parts in there we know what goes where um, you may uh, decide if you take a piece of cardboard um, simply because you can use a decent size, maybe a two foot by two foot piece and lay it on the bench next to you or on a chair or a table somewhere in the area where you're working and you can lay out your parts as, to, as far as where they go as you remove them this way you don't have a problem putting it back together. Uh, another thing you can do is take pictures. You know, today with the digital cameras everybody has, you take yourself some pictures along the way and that may aid you when it comes time to reassemble. My wife, on occasion, will be throwing away pots and pans, and I don't think there's been one yet that's made it to the garbage. So, just a saucepan <laughs> works great. So, as you can see, I'm wearing the gloves. It makes a big difference. This time of year, you know, I'm, I'm doing this quite often, and my hands are getting greasy, and I end up washing them a gazillion times a day. Well, this makes life a lot easier for me. And, Wow, that's uh, quite a bit of junk that came out first. You can see some of the black on the drain plug itself. I think you're going to be surprised when you see. Look at this block just coming out of here, boy. <laughs> you're going to be uh, pretty surprised when you see what comes out of this unit. Yeah. Uh, due to the interior design of this sump base, simply removing the drain plug like this, we're not going to get all the oil out or the debris. 
So we're just getting the bulk of it out so that we don't have a big mess. I'm going to put the drain plug back in so it's not real messy when I relocate this. Turn the pump the other way so we can remove this side plate. This uh, sump cover motor mounting plate. Those long screws. Well, let me back up a second. Let's get this oil out of the way because it's always just an accident waiting to happen. We'll move that over here onto the second bench I have behind me. Those two long screws that held the motor on actually thread in to here. And here. Now that corrosion you saw when I removed that motor end plate uh, that was filled up in this area was right on these threads. And like I say, this bolt is pretty clean overall because it's up away from the moisture. The moisture tends to lay in the bottom of the motor. So now this tool I've had for 20 years. I can't even begin to tell you how handy it's been over the years. I won't mention any names. Um, actually, I think the store I bought it at went out of business. But excellent little tool. Um, there's a Allen head bolt here, cap screw, whatever you want to call it, that has to be removed. So we scrape the corrosion around it. Again, being that it's at the top, it's not bad. Now, maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't even see it due to the corrosion. But, the other one that we need to remove is down here. And it's just packed solid with corrosion. So we're going to scrape around this head with this pick. Get the inside of that cleaned out. Uh, maybe what I can do actually is touch it with the grinder real quick. Once again, I'm still wearing my safety glasses. see just how corroded this is. That corrosion really gets in there. Alright, let's clean this up here. Uh, won't mention any brands on this, just a little brake cleaner. Tell you what we use as far as the ingredients. Brake cleaner, we're not really particular about brand. Uh, the brake cleaners, there's actually only one that we're allowed to use in this state, is a combination, well actually it's hexane, no, heptane. Heptane and acetone. Basically what we're spraying is acetone. The heptane is the propellant. So we're really just spraying this down with acetone. Uh, that's what we like. Uh, we're not chemists or scientists or physicists, but we don't like the ingredients that are in most brake cleaners, and I won't mention any brands, but most of the well-known brands you can go down to the auto parts store and pick up, or your local department store and pick up, are not something you really want to be spraying, especially in an enclosed area. Uh, we've got a lot of ventilation here, you can't see it, but we have an exhaust fan, the vents are propped open right now, and our garage door is open two feet to allow airflow through the shop. Um, normally I would have the exhaust fan on, but if I actually had the fan on, you would not be able to hear anything I'm saying right now. So we're going to do it this way.